Hello and welcome to the Living Smarter Wellness Challenge once again. We're already at week 14 and there's still so much to talk about. Just to let you know, once we're finished talking about the three macronutrients and have learned how to change the items in our pantries, my plan is to do a two-week body cleanse with you. Spring is the natural time for the body to want to cleanse itself. If you choose to participate, you'll be amazed at how great you feel and how clear your brain will be. Your body will automatically start to lose weight if it needs to. So last week I talked about sugar and its many names. The previous week we talked about how simple carbohydrates like flour, rice, sugars, and so on can keep your insulin levels elevated all the time, causing insulin resistance, which is what leads to obesity and type 2 diabetes. Now I'd like to talk about another problem that eating sugar and simple carbohydrates can cause. You'd be surprised to know how many people have no idea they're dealing with this monster. If you find that you tend to crave carbohydrates or simple carbs in the form of pasta, sweets, nuts, alcohol, or even fruits, there's a good chance you're dealing with what's called candidiasis. Today's handout is a form you can fill out that will tell you if this is something that you should be concerned about. But first, let's look at what candidiasis is. Our bodies are loaded with various microorganisms that all play a role in our health. We carry bacteria, archaea, fungi, protists, and even viruses in our bodies. In fact, human cells are outnumbered by these microorganisms 10 to 1. For each cell your body has, you have 10 bacteria. Some of them are very advantageous. In fact, we need them to live. They help us digest our foods and absorb the vitamins we need. However, others are not so beneficial. One of these unfriendly guys is Candida albicans. Candida is a type of yeast that naturally forms in our bodies. It lives in a happy balance with the rest of the microorganisms in the gut just like yeast that you would use to raise bread or make wine, it lives by eating sugars and turning them into carbon dioxide and alcohol. Candida is what is known as an opportunistic pathogen, which means it'll take any advantage it gets to multiply out of control and cause illness. Candida is normally kept under control by our good bacteria, but unfortunately, modern medicine and our typical North American diet can be very damaging to the balance of these little guys. This creates the perfect situation for candida to take over. So let's talk about um, this gut bacteria balance. Probably the biggest thing that starts to change this balance is whenever we take antibiotics. Antibiotics were a miracle discovery for helping people with life-threatening infections. These antibacteria saved many people's lives. However, they also destroy many of your good gut bacteria. This means each round of antibiotics you've taken in your life has killed off some of your good bacteria along with the bad infections. This messes with your happy gut balance because the good bacteria doesn't grow back as fast as the nasty little pathogenic yeasts like Candida albicam. So what ends up happening is that the Candida yeasts start to grow and develop into a fungus in your gut that can spread into other parts of the body causing all sorts of symptoms. Symptoms like headache, aches and pains all over your body, brain fogs, fatigue, yeast infections, thrush, sinus infections, food allergies and intolerance, fungal infections on the skin and nails, and weak immune system. Candida can even be an issue in fertility. I actually have a friend that couldn't get pregnant when she was young and on the advice of her doctor here in Ottawa, she went on the Candida protocol and now has two beautiful children. Because it's a living and growing organism, when Candida turns into a fungus, it needs to be fed to stay alive. The main food it eats is carbohydrates. Candida loves carbs, especially simple carbs. And if you don't feed it what it needs, it will release toxins in your body that will make you crave these foods. This is what leads to those irresistible cravings you get for carbohydrates and sugars. Something to remember is that it's not you that wants those sugars. The fungal infection is what really wants to be fed. 
Many people don't know they're struggling with candida overgrowth. They have no idea that it plays a huge role in why they can't lose weight and beat those cravings. Understanding whether or not your body could be struggling with it is the first step towards learning how to correct the condition and get on the road to weight loss and feeling better. I've attached a candida questionnaire that I'd like you to fill out. This will let you calculate your candida score, which will give you an idea if you should be concerned about it or not. When you fill it out, be sure to be as honest as possible. Don't cheat yourself. Next week, I'll give you tricks to try and minimize this fungus overgrowth. In the long run, it'll help eliminate those cravings and put you on the path to weight loss. In the meantime, your job is to figure out if you're dealing with it and how badly. Please post any questions you may have. Good luck, have fun, choose to be happy, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.